Ever since I can remember, I've always liked making things. And studying engineering at MIT has really opened up a whole new world of possibilities, like this. The problem is, after a while, I kind of ran out of new tools to try. So I decided I should make my own. I like to make a lot of iterations of an idea really quickly. So the ideal tool for me would be something kind of a mix between a 3D printer, where it's a flexible process building layer by layer, and a formative process, which is a very fast process, making things all at once in a mold. After doing some research for my senior theses, I discovered a tool that could theoretically be both fast and flexible. It's something called a reconfigurable mold. There are a lot of ways to make a reconfigurable mold, but one of the most common ways is by using an array of pins, like in this example here. The problem with this is that the more detailed you want your surface to be, the more motors you need to control each individual pin. So this surface would require about 11,000 motors. That's a lot of motors. I wanted to make this device available for everybody. And if I put 11,000 motors in it, it's not going to be affordable. After three long years trying to build this machine through my undergraduate and master's degree, I think I finally stumbled on a solution. When I told my friends about this idea, they all said I had a screw loose. And I'll show you why. I was testing out a vibrating parts feeder that I got off eBay when I noticed something really interesting. A small screw was coming undone on the top of the machine, as if by magic. After some analysis, I realized that I could use this technique to actuate the pins in my array. I characterized a critical frequency the pins would start moving. The really cool thing about this idea is that you don't need motors under every single pin. You just need actuators along the rows and the columns, making it scale really well to high resolutions. This breakthrough, I think, for the first time ever, really unlocks this technology for the world. As I continue working to commercialize this product, I'm really excited to see how it could shape the future of personal fabrication.